name's uh, Michael Cooper. They call me Coop. We're here in St. Francis, Wisconsin at my garage, Heavy Hangers Garage. Uh, my current build right now is a 64 Impala Coop. So growing up, my dad was pretty much a handyman. As far as me getting mechanically into cars, I remember running around as a little kid on my neighborhood, in my neighborhood like I used to run like a like a bike business, like a, you know, fixing people's bikes, like customizing them. And then, you know, that was up until I was about 14 and then once I transitioned into high school, I took a pretty big interest into, you know, expanding my you know artistic ways into cars and that's when kind of you know me and my dad started like you know taking on bigger projects you know it was like go-karts you know we do like detail projects he would take in some side work i kind of help him with that and then pretty much after high school honestly i wanted to get into like business i didn't really want to work on cars and then i kind of flunked out of you know university and then i went to technical school and really as far as the wrenching career path kind of took off from there. And I really haven't looked back. I've probably been working on cars, like I said, since I was 14. Even, even probably before that, you know, just even having the knowledge, you know, passing my dad a wrench or stuff like that, you know. So the majority of the work, uh, really, what I really started like doing is like air ride installs. Um, I kind of transitioned more into hydraulic installs now. I pretty much do everything mechanical here, whether it's old, classic, uh, motorcycles, I do new cars as well. Uh, pretty much anything that has a motor I'll work on for the most part. You know, the exception of a few things. Some fab work, otherwise, you know, I'll send it out to one of my boys and they'll come here and do a little bit if I can't do it at that time. I'm trying to expand more this year and do, you know, more crazy builds, more custom stuff, but you know, one thing at a time right now. Really the big difference between air ride and hydraulics is air suspension, you're riding on a cushion of air. Hydraulics is more of a metal to metal type deal. You have a spring and a hydraulic ram, um, and then as well as hydraulic pumps in the back. Air ride is more for people, you know, they really don't want to cut up their cars. But what I mean by that is you have to pretty much modify your frame on a hydraulic car, which uh, entails like actually cutting the frame doing all these sort of reinforcements and modifications. With Air Ride, you don't really have to do that. A lot of these companies now are making bolt-in kits all the way up to 50 to have Air Ride kits, you know, that are mostly bolt-in. Um, some fab work is required, but uh, it's easier for the consumer and it rides a little bit better as well too if you do it correctly. There's a big difference riding a car that's on hydraulics as well as a car that's on Air Ride. I've ridden in both, I've owned both. Personally, I prefer hydraulics. There's a different feel when you're riding in something like that. It's more of a, it's kind of hard to explain. You know, when you hit the switch and your car goes up super fast, it's like you get like a almost inner child feeling, you know, and I, nobody can really take that away from me. I can't get that with air rides, so. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. It was one of my dad's friends, he had a low rider. We were, we, and we didn't really go far. We just went for like a ride around the block. And I remember him just hitting the switches, just front, back, side to side, three wheel. And I remember this as like a little kid in awe, like, wow, like, I didn't know cars could do this. And I mean, I knew like a low riders, like my dad always used to get like low rider magazines when I was a kid. And I'd see them, but I just thought they were like model cars growing up, you know? And then actually being able to ride in one was like completely life changing. Like that literally is what did it for me, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to have one of these when I grow up. There's a lot of, like, misconception about the lowrider community. How, like, you know, we're all, like, thugs. Or, like, we do all sorts of dirt for our cars and whatnot. Like, there's a lot of dudes that I know that literally work seven days a week to literally try to put their car on the street and do everything at home by themselves. And a lot of that comes from being in a group, whether it's a car club or just having a tight knit, of, you know, friends to help you with that. Like the lowrider community is literally one big family. So like there's a lot of love that comes into lowrider you know, and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, it's it's a big lifestyle. Like, you have to really be committed. You got You can't have one foot in, one foot out. A lot of these guys, that's literally what they do every single day is low ride. And you know, uh, some people think it's dumb, 
but I just that's just the way of life, you know. It's just I didn't really I didn't really realize that until probably when I started kicking with a lot of the old heads here, like how tight knit they were. Like these guys know each other like from 40, 50 years ago. And they're still friends, you know, whether they have falling outs or whatnot. And I grew up, you know, local car shows riding around with my dad. I and mean, these guys know who I am, you know. And then like now they come to me to work on their cars and it's kind of like an honor, you know, like, oh my God, like he trusts me to work on his car. And like he see me like flourish into what I am now, you know, from being a little kid running around at car shows to doing this, you know, for them, you know. I probably owned like 15, 20 like Honda Civics, like all modified. Like within that time, I was probably between 18 and like 22. I probably had all those cars. And then I ended up getting, uh, I was still riding around my pops, like the Neapolitan and whatnot, working on that. Uh, and then I ended up trading one of my Hondas for a 62 Corvair that I had. Uh, it was bagged already, just bagged in the back. So it drugged. And that car is probably like, flipped the switch with like everything. I was like, man, I want to do this. This is way more fun. So I had the Corvair for about two years, uh, did a little bit of work to it. And then I had an opportunity to buy my first 64, which was in 2020. I bought that car around the same time I had the Corvair, but the Corvair, I kind of I kind of beat it up for that two years of ownership. And um, I ended up buying my first Impala. It was 64 coupe, gold, metal flake, white top. And it was like an early 2000s build. So it sat in this guy's garage. He was gonna build it with his son, and his son unfortunately passed away. So it just sat. Uh, I paid six grand for that car. Jeez. And that was 20. That was literally right, like pre-COVID, right before all the prices skyrocketed. Bought the car for six grand. I probably put a lot, I probably put at least, you know, 12 grand into it. Don't tell my mom that. I ended up selling it in 2022, oh, 2021, damn, I had that car. Yeah, 2021, sold that car. Completely stock, no air ride, no nothing, uh, for 22,000. And I miss it, but that was around the time my dad had just passed away. Uh, so how I, like, how I thought about it is I really can't drive two cars. My mom never felt comfortable driving the car, so. I sold that, dumped the money into the green car, and now we're kind of just, you know, going with the flow and building the green car, so. To me, like, low riding is like driving your car every single day, beating it up every single day, breaking it, fixing it, whatever you gotta do. Like, if I gotta bring extra ball joints, cylinder, everything with me all the time in a toolkit, if I break my shit on the side of the road, I'm gonna do it. I did that already with Air Ride, and and I and not to bash anybody again, but when I had my my gold sixty four, it was on air. You know, everybody would make fun of me, whatever. But I drove that. That was my daily driver for an entire summer. I drove the car every day. I did burnouts with that car. I was doing all types of you know stupid shit with that car. Every time I broke that car, I was fixing it the next day. I don't. I went through three transmissions in that car. I literally had a spare transmission like in my backyard. Even if I couldn't get it here, I'd take it home and do a transmission in my backyard. It'd take me like two hours. And I was literally right back cruising. They're like, damn, when your car just broke? I was like, yeah, but I fixed it. That's what I think low riding is about. Just get in it, no destination, music on, and just going. You know, see who you see, be like, hey, I'm gonna be out here, catch me out here riding, you know. But honestly, th there's, no better feeling or pride that you get like to tell somebody that you built your car and they're like you know and everybody asks me like who built it and you just say me and that's like a like a super macho feeling like yeah i did that you know and and part of me loves doing that especially with stuff like this you know like i have people that you know either went to high school with or just people in general that'll send me pictures of cars and it'd be stuff that i worked on i'm like yeah i did that and they're like really like no way and i'm like yeah like i you know i, I worked on that and it's just like a pride feeling, you know. If, if you don't take pride into your, your car and whatnot, then you shouldn't be doing this at all. If you're just doing it just for internet clout and to get likes and you, and you think you get women and all types of stuff with this, it, it ain't, that ain't what it is, you know. Low riding culture is 
like I said, it's family. And, and, and if you're going to be in it, you got to be in it all the way. There's no half step in it at all. So I personally like people that build their cars, people that buy stuff. Hats off too, you can afford it, but that's not what low riding is. So.